Hello everybody, it is still a power week. I am planning to do this as my last video for the November and October update. If there is something else you want me to review, let me know down below in the comment box, but I think I've done enough videos to be honest. Okay, we are going to talk about artificial intelligence in Power Query, something that when I heard it, I loved it. The idea of it, amazing. There is some buts though. So as always, I will give you my thoughts on the good and the bad and uh, let's give it a go, shall we? Okay, so I have loaded some data about the uh, YouTube channel because it has a little bit of everything, images, text, and you know. But uh, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go to Power Query and uh, this is a preview feature, by the way. You have to activate it. You have to go to Options, and then it's called AI in Power Query, maybe? If we're lucky, let's see. Preview Features, AI Insights Function Browser. So you have to turn that thing on if you want it. Now, one of the bad things right off the bat, you need to have Premium. So if your pockets are not deep, I'm sorry, but this is not going to work for you, which is such a pain. But I do have actually a video. It's an old one, but it should still work where I show you how to do this manually. Hello, good evening. So there it is. I'm going to put the link down below so you can actually um, go through it but what you basically are doing is you're using the api uh, you need to create i show you everything an api key and then you pay by usage and i don't know why they cannot do this for the for here for this text analytics it's the same service it's the same everything one thing i know for my version is that it won't work in the power bi service but maybe there are ways around it for another video. Um, it won't work in the Power BI service, so you are stuck to doing the analysis in desktop only. So with this, it will work in Power BI service if you have premium capacity. I would love to hear an explanation as to why they cannot just charge for usage. And what I receive is, you know, that it takes capacity, fine, you can pay for capacity. And one way if you don't have premium is to do a premium embed, I have a link down below on the different licensing possibilities, but it is too much of a hassle to set it up. I I think it should be a key and you pay for it like you do for Google services, like you do for any other service. So I hope they reconsider and make this easier for even pro users to use. Otherwise, you know, if you don't have premium capacity, go to that video instead. I'll show you how to use con cognitive services. And again, it won't work in the service, but mm, it's a start, right? If you are a premium user, congratulations, this is for you. And it is done beautifully. I, I, I can't express that enough. It's just seamless. The, the technical implementation of this is brilliant. I'm going to show you. So we have here some information about videos that I've published. And let's say that we want to do some, what do I talk about in these videos? So we go to text analytics and you have uh, different possibilities here. Uh, the same as the, you have in the cognitive services on the web. Uh, let's see if it loads. You will have to authenticate. So what you need to do is um, you sign in and then if you have a premium capacity, it will do what it's doing for me. If you don't have a premium capacity, it will tell you, it will say, so sorry, not for you. <laughs> so you can give it a go. So here you have it. You can detect language. So if you have a list of, I don't know, reviews on TripAdvisor and you know, want to know who is reviewing instead of grabbing the country, you want to check the language, you can do that with that. This is everything in English, so there's no idea. Extract key phrases, uh, sift through the... Oh yeah, it just um, grabs important phrases in your data. 
Uh, and then we have score sentiment, which is the sentiment analysis. That is what I show in the other video. So let's do extract key phrases. Ling languages, I think it's like that. I wish they would put a, a link here to where they have, you know, the documented the ISO code, but okay. I think that's the right one anyway. So you just do like that and then it does its magic. You don't need to do anything else. So it gives you extract phrases on each and then extracted the key phrases. Awesome. And then we can put it in close and apply. This would be useful again for like TripAdvisor reviews, right? That you can go and grab them and say, okay, what, what is people doing? You can do a sentiment analysis, but more often than not, I think looking at the words is, gives you more information. Sentiment analysis is, you know, I actually work with a customer where we did sentiment analysis on TripAdvisor and uh, we match the sentiment analysis score to the score that the user gave. You know, in TripAdvisor, you get stars. So we match the five stars with the score and they should match, right? So you can see, okay, if these five stars, you should have a high score. And it didn't do that well. So caution. <laughs> so um, try it, try it yourself. Anyhow, um, let's see, we have the extract key phrases and you can use the word cloud, right? I thought I pinned the word cloud. Maybe when it, this thing crashes, everything disappears, I don't know. Word cloud is a Microsoft um, visual. So save to use, okay. Can I pin it again, please? Thank you. There you go. Okay. So let's see. Power BI is what I talk most about my videos. Who knew that? <laughs> okay, let's go here and uh, stop words. We don't want to have power or BI because of, I know that. And I don't want to have video. Oh, look who's digging, showing up, Dax. Let's remove DAX. And then I'm writing power behind like that too often. That's not so good actually. And then it says North Wind, Water Spaces, Corbel. You see? So that's how it works. But did you see how easy it was to do? Mind blowing. PD, gigantic PD that is not possible to use. Um, on um, pro and free license, really. So again, the other ones will be sentiment analysis and the tech language. Let's test it. We can take, test the tech language because everything is in English. So that should be able to do it. Let's see, the other one will give you just a score from zero to one and the higher the score, the higher the, uh, you know, the good sentiment, they, they felt good. Um, and the lower the score, the more unhappy they are. And if you have the possibility to match that with the score that the user actually gave, then it give you an idea of how well the service is performing for you and your language. Obviously in TripAdvisor, there are a lot of, good job. There are a lot of uh, foreign people giving reviews where the you know, use of English, they might be not so good if they are doing that. So it could be harder for detecting the sentiment in those cases. So we should have English only. What do we have? Uh, it's detected language. Polish? What? <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay. Now let's move to vision. So vision is, it will go through images and it will tag them. And that could be useful. I don't know, for example, if you have an Instagram account and you know, on Instagram, others can tag your account. 
So you could use these to see what type of image they are using to tag you. And that might be things that they appeal to your audience. So you could actually do those to on your main account. An idea. Could be anything, anything. So let's give it a go. I have actually here um, thumbnails. So we're going to do an image tagging on my YouTube thumbnails, which is going to be a disaster, not a service problem. This is what is it going to find, but let's do it just for the sake of it. So you see how it works. Again, this is not the best experiment, but uh, I didn't have, I don't have a data source of images that I could show you you know, like a good use case. So just for testing the service so you see how it works, I think this this is good enough. Come on, baby, we're waiting for you. I'm guessing that is connecting to the Azure service. And here we have it, tag images. And then medium thumbnail, the language is again English. And let's see what it does. Let's go to close and apply. I don't think we need to wait. You can load and do the work already while loading. Evaluating. And remember when you are using images in Power BI, you have to tag them as image URL. Otherwise you won't see them as images. And in this case, if you want to know how good the tag was, you want to see, you want to visualize the, the image. I'm going to stop talking and wait for this to load. It's taking longer than normal. Be back. Okay, it took about all in all a minute, which again, I don't think is that bad. It's analyzing uh, images. So uh, let's see. First of all, we're going to grab the thumbnail. It is in there and hopefully I've already tagged it. No, I haven't tagged it yet. So you have to go to format, click on the thing, custom column tools. I'm still getting used to this stuff. And then you have to do image URL. Okay. And once you do that, this will change as an image. And then it's way too small. I never know what this is in grid. Okay. So image height, do a little bit bigger. And then I don't know how that will call it. image tags. Screenshot, grass and green. Where is grass? And oh, where is green? <laughs> okay. Sign text. This is, this is not a good experiment, obviously. So I'm going to get just anything. Uh, so what is the confidence that it got it right? Quite low. That was quite high. If it's zero to one. What? Anyhow, you see how it works. You see what it does. That's the point of this video. Unfortunately, not the best example, but test it yourself. Grab if you have premium capacity. Otherwise do it on like I show you on the other video. Um, AI, let's go there. And I have some disappointing news for you. Here's what I've learned when I try to test this. Um, if you click on it, Azure Machine Learning, it just says it. That, well, so you let it work and in two seconds, it's probably going to tell us it says, no Azure machine learning models are available at this time. Make sure that you have access to machine learning studio, web service, or machine learning service workspace. And then it gives you a link. Thanks for that. Very useful. And then if you go in here, um, here's the thing. It says here, machine learning is available only on data flows and Power Query Online. And uh, for what I understand, it means that you can only create the models in Azure. So you can create the, your models using Dataflows and Power Query Online. You cannot create the models 
in Power Query desktop. So first you have to create the models in Azure. And once you have created the models, you can reuse the models in Power Query. That's what I understand anyhow when I read this. And uh, once you have created the models, you have to give the user permission to use the model. And it go it walks you through the permission settings in here. So you have to go to subscriptions, and for that you need to be an Azure administrator. I I'm not. I think I do have. If I didn't delete everything, uh, machine learning, um, the one that I failed miserably. I think it is still on on the Microsoft uh, subscription, but I do not have access to their Azure account obviously, so I cannot give myself access to it from Power Query. I, I can contact somebody at Microsoft to get help, but uh, I'm, I can imagine that once you get access, you will click there, it will show up, boom, 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 and then you can just use it. You see it here, it's exactly the same thing, and then you can just put your parameters and boom, you're good to go. So do you have the process of actually setting the machine learning model and then you can reuse them in Power Query, which is a great thing. You can have a data scientist that knows what he's doing to set up those models. And then you can just, without knowing what they did, use it in your data. Obviously, you still have to know when is appropriate to use what, where, but otherwise you can use them. Once they tell you, okay, you can use these for sales forecasts, then you can use it every month. Which is good, it's a good thing, yes. But it's only premium and to set it up is a little bit tricky. So I don't know, I, I say, in the beginning, I said it all the time, I'll say it again. I won't have a subscription based model where you pay for usage without having to have any capacity in nothing. And then you could calculate like this is going to cost you a thousand crowns or a hundred euros to run. Do you want to run it? I mean, you could do this calculation probably and say, ask. And then if you say yes, charge them. <laughs> it's easier. Oh, I don't know. What do you think? Let me know. Let me know. Maybe it's just me. So if you have premium capacity, go wild with this. Super cool. If you don't, let's wait for another implementation, basically. Stop talking now. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Give those things a go. Quite fun to play with. Test them always before to make sure that they give you what you want. And this is all for Power Week. So have a great day. <laughs> I think I will see you tomorrow, probably. Take care. Bye-bye.